Good morning, everyone. My name is Michelle Kelton. I'm with NC Tech, and we are thrilled to see all of your faces this morning on Zoom for the Lean In Circles Leader Training. We have more than 50 women who participated in either the launch of Lean In Circles at our Summit for Women in Tech, or they participated in the virtual launch last week that have taken the next step to sign up to lead a circle. So thank you for taking that step and for being with us this morning to learn more about what it means to lead a circle and the resources that we have available through um, the leanin.org um, organization. And I'm pleased to introduce you to Raz Samimi who you will recognize from one of the launches so far. And Roz um, is going to um, present to you the Lean In Circles leader training. So thank you, Roz, for being with us this morning. And we look forward to learning more about what it takes and what is available um, for these women that have taken the step to um, make a commitment to lead a circle. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you all so much for being here. Um, I'm sure I saw many of you on either um, on one of the kickoffs. So today's focus is going to be on leading a lean in circle. And so we're going to go into a lot of details on that. I'm just going to start sharing my screen in a second. Let me see if I can actually do what I need to do. I need to share my screen and then I need to hit expand. So let me share. Great. Okay, perfect. Can folks see my screen okay? It's a little nod or, okay, perfect. Um, great, so let's go ahead and dive right in. So we talked a lot about you know circles and what they are and kind of the impact and the, the why behind um, starting or, or joining a circle. Today's focus is explicitly on leading a circle. So kind of the best practices around leading a circle, um, what's kind of required to lead a circle. Again, we want this to be as easy and impactful as possible. So this isn't meant to be an hour long session of me kind of telling you all the things you need to do to make it successful. I'm just going to share some facilitation best practices and mainly around how to access and leverage the resources available to you. So we want to make this as easy and low lift as possible, but still really high impact. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. Um, this is being recorded. Happy to also share out the deck. So don't worry about Obviously, take as, take notes as, as you see fit, but we will be sharing these resources out. So today what we're going to go through is our theory of change. We've already talked about this in the first kickoff, but the reason I bring it up again is because I want you all as circle leaders to know kind of where you fit into our, as an organization's overall theory of change and creating a more equal and diverse world. So we'll go over that really quickly. We'll talk about why we're here again, very fast. We'll spend most of our time on how to lead a circle and talking about next steps. Um, for folks that uh, are joining us on the call, if you don't mind just going on mute, unless you want to ask a question, that'd be so, so helpful. Okay, awesome. So our mission at Lean In is to help women achieve their ambitions and work to create a more equal and inclusive world. And we do this in three distinct ways, which we've talked about. One is addressing systemic barriers. If you're interested, we run an annual study called Women in the Workplace. We launched our ninth annual study on October 5th. So if you're looking for fresh data on women at work, definitely feel free to um, search for that on our website and download the report. Lots of very interesting findings. Essentially, organizations receive personalized reports with this that we, we, we work with McKinsey for this report. So it's completely free. It's actually the largest study on the state of women in corporate America. And so if your organization might be interested in participating, definitely feel free to reach out to me. We can make that happen for next year's study. The next body of work that we have is creating inclusive cultures through different programs like how to combat bias, how to show up as allies at work. But today we're focusing on empowering women and that's through lean in circles. And so when you're creating a space for women to come together in the context of circles, 
with the skill building resources that we have, the leadership development curriculum, you know, the connectivity resources that we have, that's where the magic really comes together, where you're holding that space. And so many women are coming together um, to be able to have really important conversations. And so you all as circle leaders are really the drivers of this third pillar of our work. So just want to say thank you, because we just couldn't do this, this body of work without you all. So again, a thank you for, for raising your hand to lead a circle. Um, and as we all know, there's so many reasons why it's important to show up for women. We talked about some of these during our last session. We know that women are having a worse experience than men in the workplace. We know this is for a handful of reasons. Women, especially women of color, remain significantly underrepresented in leadership positions. And so creating a safe space or having that safe space at work is sometimes you know, very difficult to find for women. There's a broken rung. So as you're kind of advancing into leadership roles for every 100 men promoted to manager, only 86 women are promoted and only 82 women are of color are promoted. And so no matter how hard women are working and how educated they are and, and all of that, it's really this broken, you know, the systemic barrier that's holding women back. Again, that can create a less than ideal situation and experience at work. And again, reinforces why it's so important um, to have circles and to be a part of a circle. And as women, you know, move into leadership positions, and I'm sure also even more so in the tech space, more often than not, women become the only. So the only woman in a room, the only woman of color in a room, the only woman in tech in a room, et cetera. Um, and that can feel quite isolating. And as a result of this, one in three women are considering downshifting or leaving the workforce altogether. We start we started to see this um, kind of as we were emerging from the pandemic, but we are still seeing this in the data as well to this day. And so in a world where women still face barriers, Lean in Circles offer that safe space to share struggles, give and get advice and celebrate each other's wins because there is so much power in coming together. And so as circle leaders, you are the ones creating this space. So before we go in a little bit deeper as to what Lean in Circles are, I wanted to share why I'm here. Um, and I'm gonna invite you all to think about this for yourselves as well. So um, as Michelle mentioned, my name is Roz. I'm based in New York City. I've worked with Lean for several years now. Um, and kind of why I lean in, it's really because of you know being the child of immigrants. I am very, very passionate about gender equality just because of where my family is from. That is not something that is um, a given at all. It's, it's, it's just something that's not really um, common. And so for me, fighting for this is very important and something that I care deeply about. Um, and it's kind of my, my why is something that I lean on very often when things get difficult, when I hear, you know, um, in, in examples of injustice, kind of thinking back on my why really fires me up. Um, and I really share this honestly, just to kind of give you all a space to think about your why. So before we go into how to lead a circle, you know, all the resources, all of that, I just want to invite you to think about why do you lean in? What does leaning in mean to you? Maybe another question to ponder is, why do you want to be a circle leader? I'm going to give us three minutes to think about this. Just, just kind of silently to ourselves. Feel free to write it down. Um, and then in three minutes, we'll come back together. And for anyone that wants to share, we'll definitely invite folks to just kind of take a moment to share theirs. But we'll just kind of take a moment here. Okay, awesome. Does anyone want to share? No pressure, of course. You're welcome to share in the chat. But if anyone wants to share, you can raise your kind of Zoom virtual hand and I can ask you to unmute and share your why. Yeah. Is it Jay? Did I say your name correctly? Yes. Uh -huh. um, I lean in now because I it, I was a manager of a team a couple of years ago and I was very intentional about creating a psychological safety environment um, for the women on the team as well as the men. But I was able to witness the women growing. Um, and gaining, gaining confidence in that space. And I want it to be able to continue to do that going forward. Yeah, thank you so much for sharing. You're welcome. Tina, did you want to share? Sure, good morning. Um, I was lucky enough, New York City girl for 20 years, to have a mentor that was a female executive and pretty powerful in New York. Um, so learning from her and learning how to embrace um, just the knowledge that we have in our experiences, I'm a true believer of paying it forward. So it's for me, it's more about, you know, sharing that empowerment, being a resource, 
and just creating a, a friendly, supportive environment for women to ask the questions and learn and just try to grow their careers accordingly. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for sharing. Um, Sylvia, did you want to share? Hi. Yes. I wanted to share because neither one of those have been my experiences where I've had um, a lot of support from um, a mentor or a coach or, you know, a leader. And what I've realized is I've built this skill set um, in my experiences as a talent development professional. And at this point in my career in life, I think it's important that I honor the voice that I have through those experiences. And leaning in to me also means sharing what I do have and still learning from others of what they have so that we can build a stronger um, network of togetherness and diversity in what that experience and that voice looks like. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for sharing. Um, we probably have time, Anne and Becky. We'll, we'll end with you, Becky. But Andy, do you want to share? Sure. I, I did something very similar for about 10 years and just the about individually having that confidence to set goals, maintain an accountability with the same group. And then also you always can't see the problems because you're in the middle of them. And it's really nice to have a small group to really help you identify not just the problems you're having, but how to overcome them gives you a really good perspective because it's not just the people that you immediately work with. So yeah. Absolutely. Thank you for sharing. Um, and Becky, do you want to close out this, this section for our session? Sure. I, um, when I first had my kids, uh, I was, I was working, um, in education and I did not have supportive managers, even though they were, they were women and I was, you know, wanting a flexible schedule and everything. And they basically told me, well, we had to struggle when we were, when we were new moms and, you know, basically it's just the way it is instead of giving me that support that I really needed at that time. So I guess I, I want other people to not struggle just because I had to. So I kind of want to change it. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you so much for those of you that shared out loud and in the chat and for everyone who thought about this. Um, I always think it's helpful to have kind of a clear why behind wanting to lead a circle. Um, and so just, just feel free to kind of continue to think about this. This can definitely expand. This can change as you continue on and kind of your journey as a circle leader. Um, but I just love this question. So thank you for, for kind of doing this exercise with me. Um, let's go now into kind of what lean in circles are at their core and then best practices and kind of, um, you know, ways to lead a lean in circle. So they're going to be small groups. Um, we're probably going to have them be around six individuals and we'll talk more about kind of the setup process and the matching process at the very end. So, um, don't worry about that kind of bit for now, but the idea here is that, you're connecting with a small group of individuals on a monthly basis for six months. So your group will not change. Once your group is assigned to you, you will have that group for the duration of the program. And then based on how things go, you know, in an ideal world, we'll do a relaunch in six months where people, new people can get involved. You may want to continue leading a circle. You may instead want to join a circle. We have some joiners become leaders. So six months from now of you leading your lean in circle. Most probably your circle is going to be virtual. If you happen to have folks who live in the same city as you in your circle, um, you know, an in-person meeting might happen. I wouldn't uh, do a hybrid just because that would probably not provide the best experience to those who are virtual. Um, so I probably you're going to be 100% virtual. And these are, of course, um, member led. So you're going to be leading the circle with the resources that we'll be providing. And we'll talk extensively about the resources. Becky, did you have a question? No. Okay. Oh, your hand was still, I was from that. Got it. Okay. Um, so yeah, so we talked there, about, there is a question in the chat, Roz. I don't know oh, if you want to wait until the end for that. It's, um, can you invite women from your organization to join? That's probably a question for you. Do you want to take that one on? Sure. Um, Yes, the question the, or the answer is yes. We um we have a a list of women that have um selected to join a circle. So we will be communicating to them um when we open enrollment and you'll hear more about that shortly. Um but we will also ask you to share 
the opportunity to join circles with your network. Um, so your colleagues with, um, with other women that you feel would have an interest and would benefit from joining a circle. Um, but we'll be monitoring um, pretty closely um, as the circles start to fill up to see how many spots we have available. Yeah. Um, okay, awesome. Let's talk now about how to lead a circle. This is kind of the 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 meat of today's conversation. <clears throat> so in terms of kind of your typical circle meeting agenda, so all guides are going to look a little bit different because they all cover different topics, but all circle meetings kind of follow this general format. So once you have your first circle meeting and you kind of go through the flow of it, you kind of know how to lead a circle moving forward. So you don't have to worry about doing any prep or expecting something different. Um, but basically what happens is you're going to start with a check-in. So kind of checking in with your circle members, kind of how things are going. You're going to go through your circle fundamentals. So these are your kind of values for your circle. We'll talk more about that in a moment. Then you have a bulk of the session on your discussion questions. So some discussion guides are paired with a video that you might watch with your circle in real time. Um, if you wanted to share the video in advance of the call, you certainly could just to save, you know, five or six minutes instead of sitting there watching it together. You can ask folks, folks to watch it in advance. But as part of that video comes discussion questions, the discussion questions might range from a variety of individual explorations, group discussions, a journal exercise. But this is a this is the bulk of the session where you're actually going to be unpacking what's being discussed or the topic or the video or whatever it might be. And so this is where you're going to be spending most of your time. You then move on to your one action. And we did a little bit of a practice of the one action in the kickoff where this is, you know, we're articulating one concrete thing we're doing before our next circle meeting. Um, and here the idea behind it is by holding yourselves or by saying it out loud, you're holding one another accountable, right? And so the one action is a really great way to actually drive change. And I'm going to give in a moment some best practices for you as circle leaders to really kind of um, bring this to life a little bit more than just kind of saying it. So we'll come back to that. And then of course you'll wrap up. Um, this is probably a good chance to, you know, if anyone has any feedback or if anyone has any suggestions for the next meeting, things like that. Um, on the right hand side, you can see an example discussion guide. We have over two and a half years worth of monthly meeting content. So there should not be a, um, hopefully, um, there should be, you know, a discussion guide for everybody to cover your six months. One in name as well. Let's say there's a resource that you have used in the past from an, another, you know, another organization, or maybe it's a podcast or a discussion guide you've, you've used from, you know, online, whatever it may be. You're welcome to use those as well. Don't feel like you have to use our resources. This is just here for you to be um, useful. You can always follow this kind of like circles meeting agenda framework to be able to leverage the other resources to use in the discussion questions section. So budgeting about 40 to 60 minutes for that. Um, but that obviously requires a little bit more work on your end. So it depends on what you want to do. Okay, let's go into each of these elements in a bit more detail. So the circle fundamentals, these essentially are the values of circles. And the reason why we have these at the start of every meeting in every discussion guide, so you don't have to worry about memorizing this or writing it down, it's going to be in all the guides. Um, this really sets the tone for your circle. It also helps create psychological safety. So we recommend you actually share these out at the start of every single meeting. So Definitely do it on the first meeting, but it's also nice to just say like, hey, can we ask somebody to read out our circle fundamentals? Read them out. It kind of takes you from whatever space you were in before. You were in a work meeting. You were dealing with a family crisis. You were doing this. You're doing that. Coming back into your circle fundamentals kind of moves you into the space of your circle. So highly recommend kind of taking a moment to read these out. Um, you're going to actually see four fundamentals in some of our newer guides. We're going to, we're planning to update all of them, but want to say here that you can also have a chat with your circle about, are there any additional fundamentals that we want to bring to the table with our circle? So, you know, is there something around, um, you know, I'm not going to come up with a 
a great idea on the spot that starts with a C. It also doesn't have to start with a C, but is there something else that you want to bring to the table for your circle that feels really authentic to your group? Um, just feel free to write that down and then have that be as part of your circle fundamentals that you share out at the start of every meeting moving forward. Okay, awesome. Then we have our one action, right? We're going to go into the kind of middle, the, the kind of... Um, the resources in a moment, but once you're kind of wrapping up your circle, you end with a one action. And so this is essentially one concrete thing that every single person is going to do before their next circle meeting. This is where we really see people start to drive change. And the idea is by saying it out loud, you have a group of people holding you accountable to that. So these can be really big. They can be really small. This is in, this isn't meant to be something that adds, um, stress or anything, anything like that, but maybe it's something that somebody said in the meeting that triggered something for me or sparked something for me, probably is a better word, um, that I, and I say, I actually really want to try that out. So the, the one actions can be different for every single person. That's typically what we see in a circle meeting. I will have a one action. Somebody else might have a, a different one, or you might have a collective one action. You know, we all, are really having a hard time setting boundaries at work. You know, where we say we're done at five, we end up being done at seven. Okay, we're gonna do this one thing to really instill that we're done by five o'clock or whatever it is, right? So you can have a collective one action. And something that you can do, it's not required, but it just kind of an extra fun thing you could do is you could create like a Google Doc um, and just have month by month, share out your, your one actions. Write the person's name, have their one action there. You can have everyone take a moment to kind of add their one actions to the doc. And then over time, you'll see, okay, did we accomplish this? Did this person kind of, does this person need more support in getting to that one action? How has the one action shifted from month to month? So not definitely not required, of course, but this is something that um, some people have started to do and it seems to work really well. I'm going to pause for a second. Any questions on the agenda kind of typical flows of circle meetings, the circle fundamentals or one action. Okay, great, straightforward. Um, are the meetings recorded? Great question. You are going to be hosting the meeting on, um, you know, any sort of video conferencing platform that you choose to use. So definitely no obligation to record if for whatever reason you and your circle decide that's something that you want. If you wanted to refer back to it, you could, I would say most probably aren't just because a lot of confidential things are shared, um, but definitely not something that is expected or required by any means. You may want to record a portion of it. So like Maybe you're going through a really, you know, um, you're having a great conversation, somebody's sharing something, and you, you all agree to record that portion of it, but there's no expectation. Great question. Okay, let's talk now about the resources. So we, as I mentioned, we have over two and a half years worth of monthly meeting content. And so all of these guides are going to follow that typical kind of agenda. Um, we have a mix of skill building resources and connection resources. So for your first meeting, you're going to leverage the kickoff meeting guide. And we have different versions of the kickoff meeting guide. It doesn't matter which one you use because they all have a very similar um, kind of agenda. You are going to do a little bit of a connection activity in that kickoff meeting guide. We're going to go through the kickoff guide in, in a bit more detail because it's a very important meeting. Um, but all to say here, you're going to have a mix of, you know, um, meetings focused on connecting, focusing on, for example, we have ones on build, you know, how to show up as your authentic self at work, challenging bias, et cetera. These resources that you see on this screen are very general. Okay. So they're not necessarily focused on specific identities. And I will talk about what that means in a moment. Um, but these are probably going to be relevant to everybody, regardless of their background um, and, and, and kind of any other factors. Our newer resources that I'm going to go through in a moment is actually rooted in identity. So we have resources that are you know, guides, for example, that are really relevant to mothers, for example, or um, Latinas, for example, or, um, you know, Asian women or women with living with disabilities, for example. So we have some other resources that are a bit more kind of focused. Um, and we'll talk about that in a moment as well. I just saw a question come through. Um, how often should you meet and should we, um, 
So the circles are going to meet on a monthly basis. You're going to meet once a month for the duration of the six months. Um, and there will definitely be check-ins to see how things are going for sure. So in terms of your first meeting guide, so this the, the kickoff guide is a really important guide because it's going to set your circle up for success in the long run, and it's going to make things a lot easier for you. So in this kickoff meeting guide, have a chance to actually talk about what your circle fundamentals are going to be. You do the connection activity to really get to know one another on a deeper level. And then you set up your circle goals. And so this is a really great way to understand what your members care about, right? Are people really wanting to talk about navigating bias at work? Are they wanting to talk about developing leadership skills? Are they wanting to talk about managing work-life balance? Or is it going to be a nice mix of everything? You know, that's something that you can kind of figure out in that circle goal section of this meeting. Um, and so that's going to have about 25 minutes set up to talk about your circle goals. So it's going to be a mix of folks reading or kind of brainstorming their individual goals and then talking about it in a group. And then you as a circle leader can use that as signals to figure out, okay, we really collectively care about X, Y, and Z. So I'm going to pull resources that align with that. Um, if you skip this, that exercise, you can of course curate the curriculum yourself. There's no issues with that. Um, but I think this just makes things a lot easier. So you know exactly what people want to talk about. Any questions on the kickoff? Um, I'm looking at, yeah. So in terms of matching folks based on location, um, I think Michelle, do should we just take that one at the very end when folks are starting to fill out the sign up form? Just I, th I think so. Yeah, I think yeah. that's probably, okay. and I've gotten a couple of questions too about opening it up to women that are out of state. Um, so I think a lot will depend on we want to give first um, selection to the women who have already signed up to participate in a circle, send it out to them first, encourage them to um, to sign up quickly so they have um, an opportunity to do so because they've participated to this point. And then I think we're we're open to um, to uh, looking and promoting it more broadly um, and ask for circle leaders to help us do that. Um, I do have a question and we have a uh, register your circle form that we'll share with you. There is an open-ended question um, to add any um, information you'd like to let us know. So if you are um, very interested in, in having your, uh, your circle meet in person rather than virtual, please make a note of that there and we can see how we can, you know, make sure that open enrollment notes that it will be an in-person and where that might take place. Yeah, okay, great, perfect. Okay, great. Um, so we talked a little bit about some of those resources that are very general and kind of broad. Um, we also have preset playlists to guide your circle through a very tailored six month curriculum. And this is through those different identities. And so this is part of the Women at Work collection, which is a brand new kind of curriculum that we launched that really centers the experiences of women with traditionally marginalized identities. And so if you wanted to, you could start a circle that's specifically based on these different identities, um, and you would follow the six months that are, are already curated for this, um, this circle meeting. You could swap some of them out. So let's say by month three, you're not really feeling that discussion guide and you swap it out with another one. Like that's totally fine. It's not, it doesn't necessarily build on each other, meaning you could definitely mix things up, but just want to share, um, I'll, I'll go into a bit more detail on this as well in the next slide, but just want to share that we also have resources that really kind of talk about the experiences of navigating bias, for example, um, as you know, a working mother or as an Asian woman or a black woman, et cetera. And that way you also have the research that kind of supports that and some discussion questions that can help bring to life that, um, you know, those experiences and also the um, methods for kind of combating that in real time in the workplace. So 
we worked with a very global brain trust of experts and people with, you know, lived experiences to bring this, these guides to life. And it's something we're very excited about launching at this point in time, this curriculum is actually only available to early access partners and MC tech is one of those early access partners. It'll be available more broadly um, come November. So we're very excited for you all to kind of be some of the first uh, circle leaders to have access to these resources. So the topics cover a, a wide variety um, of kind of um, themes here. So we have ones on skill building, we have ones on microaggressions, navigating bias, and women supporting women. And so these topics all kind of channel into those six months of curriculum, those six months of, of discussion guides. But just to kind of, I'll leave this, I'll leave this screen up for a second, just so you have a chance to read it, because I think it also can give you a sense of the type of circle you might want to start as well. Any questions on the Women at Work collection and how it's different from our kind of general topics? Um, hey, Rose, this is Chitra. I just wanted to ask you, do we have to decide ahead of the time the list of topics, what we want to do over a period of time? Or should we have some words saying these are the collection of topics, which one is the most needed for the circle to you know, connect and meet and talk about it? Yeah, that's a great question. You'll we're probably going to see a mix. There might be some circle leaders here who are like, oh, yes, that's exactly what I want to do. And I'm super keen to just kind of double down on this one step playlist. And that's what I'm going to do. And that's the circle I want to start. There might be some of you who are a little bit more like maybe, you know, there's a couple of topics here that are interesting to you, but you also might want to see what your circle members are might, might be interested in. So maybe you're going to be coming up with a theme instead, like we're going to be talking about work life balance, or we're going to be talking about, um, you know, navigating work as a woman in tech, or whatever it might be, it could be a little more general. And then you can use that first circle meeting to kind of figure out what the rest of your meeting topics are going to look like. So you can certainly leverage one of the playlists, and then switch some of the meeting guides around. Did I answer your question? Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, great. Of course. Any other questions on this? Any other time? Okay, great. So just to kind of go through the example playlist of what this looks like, um, and no, you definitely don't need to be experts in this topic. So the guides are very comprehensive and it'll come with the video. So you're not expected to be an expert. All of the discussion questions have been pre-made for you in the guides. You are also meant to participate in the circle as if you are a member. What you're doing is helping navigate the conversation. So every guide will have time markers, you know, 20 minutes on this activity, 20 minutes on this question, 10 minutes here. So you're helping to facilitate, but you're not necessarily the one there who needs to be the expert um, in, in these types of, um, in these topics. Definitely not. Yeah. Great question. So here we have leadership fundamentals. This is an example of this, this curriculum, the six month playlist. You start with your kickoff meeting guide where you're connecting with your circle. Month two, you have how to become a transformational leader, how to get recognition you deserve at work, how to make assertiveness work for you, et cetera. So this is a really just kind of turnkey playlist you can just pull and say, this is the, the curriculum we're gonna use. Let's say by month three, some other themes and interests have come up with your circle. And you're like, you know what? We really actually want to use the, you know, bringing your authentic self to work um, play guide instead. So you can just use that for month four. There's no big deal. So definitely feel, feel empowered to kind of adjust things as you go as well. So let's talk a little bit about, you know, some top tips for circle leaders. And I, I do want to double down on this, this question just, just came through about, do you need to be an expert in, in this? Because the idea behind circles as well is that this is peer-to-peer -peer mentorship, right? So while you are the circle leader, you are not required or expected to be mentoring a, the group of individuals that you're going to be having in your circle, right? There are going to be women in your circle who are going to have more experience, less experience, and they're going to want to share their experiences and their learnings and their, their thoughts around that. So please don't feel like you have to show up every, every month. They're ready to answer people's questions, ready to solve people's problems, ready to kind of be the one to be everything for everyone. That's not the expectation. You are simply the one creating the space, holding the space, facilitating the conversation. So let's say somebody, you know, folks are having a hard time getting started. 
call on somebody or start the conversation. That's really what your, what your job is versus being the one to kind of um, answer all the questions and know all the answers. So a couple of top tips here. Highly recommend setting time to prepare for your meetings by re- reviewing the guide in advance. You probably really only want to do this with your first meeting. I think once you have your first meeting, you don't necessarily need to do it every month. Um, I would re- I would just budget like 10, 15 minutes to do it beforehand. If you're somebody who likes to prepare, feel free to do that month, month to month. Um, but hopefully once you have your first meeting, you'll get the sense of what the flow is like and kind of how, how circle meetings will go. We shared this before, but agreeing on a shared set of goals for your circle is always so valuable. So, you know, what are the goals that you have to, that you want to accomplish with your circle? What are the interests that you guys have? Um, these are different than your one actions. These are just things that people are wanting to kind of cover off on during the six months together. You can also create a doc for, you know, your shared goals. So maybe you kind of start, everyone is um, inputting into this document of the things that they want to accomplish over the next six months. Um, and that's something that you can certainly write down for yourselves as well. Helping to create a space where all members feel empowered to share is really great. If you are in a virtual setting, doing things like, let's say somebody's sharing and you start adding a plus sign in the chat, like a a, a kind of to support and say, yes, I I hear you. That's something that I think works really well just to kind of show folks are engaged. It kind of sets the tone for everybody else. Having your camera on, for example, that's always really helpful, but you're really there to kind of set the tone. And so just making sure that you kind of lead by example in that will, I think, set your circle up for success. Um, Making sure the discussion stays on track. I want to double click into this because the guides are very kind of curated in the sense that you know exactly, you know, in your 60 to 90 minute session where you should be for every single point in the conversation, right? Um, Want to name here that as the circle leader, you can use this to your advantage to navigate the conversation, right? So let's say we start to veer off or somebody is taking up a lot of space and sharing a lot. Feel free to use a discussion guide as kind of your support system and say, hey guys, I'm going to bring us back to the topic here, or I'm going to ask that we wrap up in five. We're going to wrap up this conversation in the next 30 seconds, and we're going to move on to the next kind of set of questions. So use it to your advantage, but also feel empowered to, let's say the conversation starts going in a super different direction, but you feel like everyone's really deriving a lot of value from that feel free to go there. You don't have to stick to the guide. You know, you're the one kind of um, assessing in that moment. Does it make sense for us to kind of go in this different direction? So definitely don't feel like you have to get through every single question in the guide and topic that's that's um, kind of shared in the guide. You can use it just how, how you see fit. And did you have a question? Uh, no, I was also going to say when sometimes when you get really close, someone will just like spill their guts out on some problem and want to dominate for the entire hour and a half. So one technique I always would use was let's just form a tiger team. Who wants to go help Michelle with X, Y, Z tomorrow? You know, who would like to focus on it and let's stay on track here. So you're not ignoring that as a problem and you're trying to build a connection within the team. And then, and, and then it doesn't derail the entire meeting. But, you know, sometimes we just come with like, blah, you know, such and yeah. such happen. And you can't derail. So you can always say, you know what, let's just let's let's just form a tiger team over here to help with that particular cause. I mean, just you know, just, you know, what I'm talking about. This, right? Now. Yeah, no, I absolutely love that suggestion. Yeah. Um, and I think another thing that you can do is you can say at the start of the meeting, you know, we're going to be following this guide. I have instructions here on how to kind of navigate our conversation today. So if I jump in and say, or leave a comment in the chat that says like two minutes left, just want to name that that's, that's me doing my job as the facilitator and leader of the circle. So I hope nobody feels offended by that. Um, so definitely just feel lean on the guide as much as you possibly want to, but then use your best judgment. If you feel like everyone's really benefiting from someone is sharing something, a learning, and you think, you know what, going in that direction is actually really great for this session. Do that. You know, you're not expected. We're not going to be kind of monitoring whether or not you're going through the content. This is just here to support you. This last one, if you take one thing away from today's session, it's going to be this last bullet. 
that you are also a circle number. So again, kind of reinforcing this idea that you're not supposed to be the kind of answer to all the questions and everyone's problems and whatever it is, you are also, you know, expected and and encouraged to come with, with problems or, you know, um, ways that you want support or questions, whatever it is that you're, that you're coming to the table with, just feel free to do that as well, because you are going to be in a group of very accomplished, amazing women who are going to be able to support you as well. Um, and so even though you're the one leading the circle and, and facilitating, you can certainly have questions and, and just kind of ways that you might want to want to get support from others too. So definitely remember that you are also a member of the circle and let's say we're talking about navigating microaggressions at work. Talk about the experiences that you've had, if, that, if that's something that you want to share. You know, mention the time that maybe something didn't really work and you wish you knew what to do. Does anyone have any suggestions for that? You know, feel feel empowered to share and derive value from your circle just as much as everybody else. Does anyone have any other tips? And thank you so much for sharing it. Anyone have any other tips? Because I'm sure you all are all just so accomplished in in and potentially have facilitation experience, maybe way more than me. So does anybody have any other tips that's worked for them that they may want to share? Feel free to just unmute yourself. I don't have a tip, but I do have a question. Um, I was involved uh, years ago when, um, when the lean in circles first came out in a lean in circle, um, whatever program at Cisco and we had a tricky thing that several of um, the men on our floor heard about and wanted to start joining. So I don't know if you have any advice or guidance. I don't know if others may experience that. Are we considering this a female only thing? And what do we do for potential um, folks that may not align uh, officially with a specific gender? Yeah. So the way that we as an organization kind of do that, we leave it up to every org who's running circles to kind of fig decide kind of what works best for them. So Michelle, is that something that we've kind of figured out in terms of how you guys want to navigate that? Well, you know, we faced this question when we um, started the summit for women in tech, and we were very intentional in calling it the summit for women in tech. And um, in having it be a women only registration. Um, so we consider Lean in Circles part of our women in tech initiative. So um, we feel like this should be a safe place for women to, um, to be able to um, come and join the circles. So that is the um, intention of the Lean in Circles effort okay. that NC Tech is helping to coordinate. Thanks, Michelle. So I'm sure you I'm sure you heard about what happened at the Grace Hopper convention. I have not. So you'll have to oh. <laughs> reach out to me after after the call and let me know or I'll have to look it up. Yeah, Google Grace Hopper and men and, and you'll find out it basically a bunch of men uh, crashed the conference, especially the recruiting section, apparently. Mm. Oh no. Okay. I was there when it happened. It was very not nice to watch. God. Wow. Yeah, I think just generally, um, you know, lean in circles, we always we, when we first launched the organization, it was about holding intentional space for women. A lot of organizations have mixed gender circles, which is great. I think there needs to be a level of um you know, openness from from everybody for that to, to be the case. We also recommend that you know, maybe starting out as women only just to kind of initially have that space. And then based on how things go and kind of what the experiences are, we might expand it more broadly. Um, so regardless, this is definitely something that can be an open conversation depending on um, kind of how things go. But for now, it sounds like just, just for women, which is um, what the, the content and the resource I think will resonate mostly with women as well. So I'm Anna and I have some rug burns on this one. And yeah. The, the the messaging that I've arrived at after, you know, hard experience is that I have advertised, I've promoted the space as a women only space. So I know, Mr. Man, that you're a great ally. But if you arrive, then that sort of sabotage um, my relationship with these other women, because this is what I've promised them. I promised them this women only space. I really appreciate your help. Here's some things you can do. If you're an ally, could you secure the space for me? Could you rent the space? Could you arrange for the security? There are all sorts of ways to help, and that would be the best thing you can do. 
But my main thing is this is what I promised other people. And I don't want to be guilty of false advertising. I love that. I love that. And there's also on our website, we have a section called for allies and it's, it, it does have some a guide for men on how to show up as allies to women. So you, that's a great, I love that just kind of things that they can be doing um, instead of joining the circle that I think is really great. Um, so thank you for sharing that. Um, okay, great. Let's do a couple more of these top tips before we talk about some next steps here. Um, so in your first meeting after the kickoff, feel free to answer the first discussion question. What I mean by that is if it's kind of a little bit of a slow start for people to kind of get in, get, get comfortable, jump into the question, feel empowered to take the first one. So there's going to be a list of discussion questions you'll go through. Um, feel free to just answer it yourself to get the ball rolling. So you might need to be the one to kind of start the group conversation. So um, you can also call on somebody, but I think starting out just really helps. Setting the tone with reactions and comments. This is kind of what I was going back to. Um, we set up some norms at the foundation ourselves. So just what are some things that we can do in meetings that kind of shows that we're engaging and we're agreeing with somebody. So adding like, I'm just going to do it in the chat right now, adding like if somebody says something and you add a little plus, um, that just shows you're, you're supporting what they're saying because we're not in person necessarily. And so it's a little bit harder to, to be engaged and to show your engagement. So setting the tones with reactions, I think is really great. Um, and feel free to use like the different tools that your video conferencing system has. Also feel empowered to share and kind of have conversations between meetings. So maybe it's setting up a WhatsApp group um, just with your whole circle, just so you have some a place for people to share. Maybe they you know, want to be connecting in between meetings. That's not a space that you need to be moderating. So don't feel like you have to be um, doing anything for that, but just creating that, that kind of group, whether it be a Facebook group or, or kind of message group or WhatsApp group or text thread, whatever it is, I think it's helpful. Um, it also is probably an easy way for you to quickly get any sort of thumbs up or thumbs down when it comes to scheduling your meetings. We do recommend scheduling all meetings in advance. So once you get your group assigned to you, you'll reach out to them. Highly recommend Doodle. Doodle is a great video, you know, a scheduling tool to find time that works for everybody. Don't worry about scheduling all of the meetings in that first session. Just get the first session scheduled. Have your kickoff meeting, you know, go through the kind of whole guide, then spend five to 10 minutes at the very end figuring out when you guys want to be meeting for your next five meetings. Go ahead, send out the invite, and you never have to worry about it again. You don't want scheduling to be the reason why your circle doesn't meet, right? Because meetings, uh, schedules fill up so quickly. Everyone is so busy. Um, so just take care of this at the very start, and then you don't have to worry about it. Another point on this is Let's say one person or two people can't make a meeting. Last minute, they say, I can't make it. I'm so sorry, whatever it is. I highly recommend if you have at least four people who are going to show up, keep the meeting. Don't reschedule the meeting for one or two people. It just creates a headache for you and everybody else. And it also is an inconvenience to the people who are able to show up, right? If you are signing up for circles, there is, has always been the expectation that you're showing up once a month. Of course, life happens. It's okay. Um, but just to make your life a bit easier, I, I don't recommend rescheduling it for one or two people. If let's say half the group can't make it, of course, that's probably worth rescheduling. But um, don't feel like you have to accommodate every single time. Okay, some next steps here. Um, I'm just looking... Oh, great. Find time. I had never heard of that. Um, but yeah, find time. It sounds like doodle. I'll, I'll write out the doodle one here so you can see this is a great one um, for, for finding time with everybody. So in terms of next steps, what we're going to be doing here for the next couple of minutes is we have a sign up form. I'm just going to share it here. This is where we're going to ask you a handful of questions to fill out to help us start the matching process. Okay. So a couple of things in there that you're going to see, of course, your name, your email, there's going to be two questions in there. One of them is what is your circle name and to come up with a little description for your circle. So we've included some examples of what that actually looks like. Um, they can be really broad. They don't need to be very specific, but these are just ways for us to kind of differentiate the different circles that you're all going to be creating. Um, so just take a moment, you know, I think we're going to start opening circles up within the next couple of weeks. So ideally 
by October 25th, you're having your, you've, you've taken a chance to fill out this form and then we can start opening up the circles for everybody else to join. Um, I'm gonna answer some of the questions that have come here. Um, yeah, there we go. Will we know the best time that are so in your in the um in the survey, you are going to be able to select or kind of add when is the best time for you as a circle leader to meet. So let's say you're only you really are only budgeting um, you know, 8 a.m. on Fridays, Eastern Standard Time. You know, that's like when you want your circle to meet, and that's what you're gonna put in the form. When it comes up for the signing time, the signing um the matching process when people are coming into the database to review the circles. If they see that this circle is going to be meeting at 8 a.m. EST on Fridays and they're on the West Coast, probably means that's not the circle for them. Um, so definitely in this form, you can add when you plan to meet. If you're if you're pretty open to it, you can leave that blank. And that can be something that you decide with your circle. Um, a quick question about that. I think Michelle kind of touched on a little bit earlier, um, and I'm not sure who this is a question for but um so if we wanted to do like if our firm is a member of nc tech um one way i guess we michelle i think you mentioned you're going to send out registration forms that we could share with like co-workers um i assume that would be to kind of join these like pre-made circles that are nc tech centric um would it could it also be an option potentially to kind of set up a circle and maybe use these resources within our or own organization. Um, so have like a circle um, just like within the firm that we could lead with our coworkers. Roz, do you want me to take that? I mean, our, our objective is to grow circles. Um, so that's why the intention is to have um, the next six months be kind of like the first the first round of circles, and then the plan would be to initiate another um, open enrollment um, in the spring. And, um, and so when we open enrollment this time, we're going to be really focused on you all and the circles that you sign up to lead. And the participants that are interested in joining a circle will see the already committed circle leaders, what the um, what the names of those circles are and short descriptions and the time frame, expected time frame to meet. So they'll be able to um, sign up based on their, you know, professional, personal interests and availability. Um, we would be glad to have um, circles um, be a diverse group of women from different parts of the state, even out of state. Um, and we would also be glad to have circles be um, internal circles. So if there's a company that wants to have um, women from that company join circles um, that are just women from that company, I think we're we're open to that too. Roz, can you elaborate maybe a little bit more on um, if we, through the registration process, should have some um, notation about it being, uh, for example, Lenovo-focused um, group? Um, how might we approach that? Yeah, that's a good question. I think... If you are wanting to connect explicitly with women within your organization, like you're like, everyone in this group is going to be specifically women in my organization, my colleagues, I would add your organization name to the, the description or your circle name. So when you're filling out the form, like, for example, if I were to start a circle within Lena and I would probably say like, you know, lean in women taking charge, for example. Um, and then in my description, I would say, we're a group of women who work at lean in, we're gonna be focusing on X, Y, and Z. So just put some sort of identifier in there that you're looking for this to be with the women in your organization. If you are separately wanting to bring this to your organization more broadly, like you're like, I think our organization could really benefit from this. We want to have a full on circles program that probably is where it, it probably doesn't make sense for it to be um, 
and it feels like it would be something that's very separate, that can be a separate conversation where we can kind of support in launching circles within your organization more broadly. But I think for the purposes of NC Tech, if you want to have it with the women in your organization, having an identifier in the descriptor or the name of your circle, I think is best. Okay, perfect. That's helpful because, yeah, I was kind of asking as sort of more toward, my intention was that I want to participate in an NC Tech broad circle um, because I work in tech within my firm, but we're a law firm. And so um, a lot of our women don't work in tech at all, but I do think it would be something that could be helpful for the women within our firm. And so I I guess I was wondering if like I could use these resources, but I didn't want to like subvert the intentions of NC Tech. Um, But if you know, we're a small firm, so I don't know that we'd have multiple circles, but um, that if these were resources I could bring yeah. to the firm um, mm-hmm. to do a circle with women here, in addition to like an NC Tech centric circle. On leanin.org, we have a lot of resources. Every all of our resources are 100% free. So if you if you think that you know the women in your firm would benefit from a circle and they wanted to start something, you're more than welcome to leverage everything that we have. Absolutely. Perfect. Thank you. Um. Katie, my experience at a previous firm showed me it was so important to know who at my firm was on the same page with me and really one of these lean-in circles. That was MasterCard Priceless. But we found in instituting our circles, it was really hard for the women to take off that corporate mask. A Mm. little tough. So at my current firm, I'm at a super huge company. And yes, we have firm-specific circles and our leaders work really hard to get the women organizationally distant so that it matters so uh so that it works but it's still always important to know like who's in there with you so maybe there's uh an for there's another way to know who at your firm is doing a lean-in circle even though that's not your best buds that you check in with and bear all and get that deep gratification from Mm -hmm. that makes sense thank you anna um well, I know we are at time and, and um, just want to name the main thing kind of call to action here for next steps. It will be to fill out this form by October 25th. Um, please let us know if you have any questions as you're going through that process to fill out. You definitely have some time to fill this out. Um, and so we'll also share out, I'm happy Michelle to share the resources that we have so people can browse the discussion guides and kind of get inspired on what are the different types of circles they might want to start. You're going to have some circles look very similar. There are some of them will be very different. Like that is totally fine. Um, it can change down the road, but for now, we just need you to fill out the form and kind of give us the most basic information about your circle so that we can start the matching and kind of sign up process on October 25th. Wonderful. And I would say if um, if you have any questions or want a sounding board and just um, sharing what your interests might be and and uh, be, you know before you um, get the form into us, please feel free to reach out. We're happy to um, to talk with you about that. Um, we when we uh, sent out the form that said, do you want to join a circle or do you want to lead a circle? We did get some input in the comments um, section. So there might be some suggestions we can provide um, based on some of what uh, women were saying that uh, were interested in joining a circle. So again, please feel free to reach out uh, if you want to talk through um, where your interests might lie and in what um, name and, and description, your theme for your circle. Wonderful. Thank you all so much for taking the time. Really, really appreciate it. So excited about all the circles that are going to be starting. Um, and please feel free to reach out if you have any other questions.